We have uh, two extraordinary comedians on the show tonight. George Carlin was the first one on the gate, so we'll start with him. Uh, George is going to be appearing June 5th at the Painter's Mill Theater in Owings, uh, Owings Mill, Maryland. Uh, the 6th of June, he'll be at the Oakdale Theater in Wallingford, Connecticut. And the 7th of June at the Auditorium Theater in Rochester, New York. Would you welcome, please, George Carlin. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, I guess, huh? Yeah, feel nice. That's good. I don't have any uh, opening announcements tonight, so I'll go right into my routine. <laughs> I had uh, kind of an interesting morning. Uh, this morning I ate at the usual place, the uh, restaurant for the unclean. <laughs> I had been eating over at the International House of Salt and Pepper, but uh, <laughs> don't like the selection. I noticed... I noticed something this morning that had escaped me. There are people who like Raisin Bran without the raisins. And if you are one of these people, you know that in order to have it that way, you have to clean the Raisin Bran. <laughs> That's right. You have to take either a desk drawer or the top of a shoebox. Is what good. The top of a shoebox. You have to put the Raisin Bran on the top and sort of jiggle it and roll those raisins out of there. Roll those raisins right out of there. Yeah. Of course, that's street raisin man I'm talking about now. I'm not talking about the scents, which is so hard to get, and you don't have to clean anyway. So it's been, uh, you know, like I say, an interesting morning. Let me mention one other thing about breakfast foods. As long as I'm on the subject, don't often get on that subject with the public... <laughs> What wine goes with freakies? <laughs> I have trouble selecting a wine in the morning. Uh, usually what I'll do, if I can't decide at all, I'll just smoke a bong full of Fruit Loops and let it go like that. You know, just, get back, just get back in bed and watch the morning movie. Why am I talking like that? One morning movie. <laughs> well, I guess I'm just in training, you know? I had an interesting morning. I say I'm going to be coming back to this theme quite a bit. I call it interesting for a good reason. You see, I don't have a nice day anymore. <laughs> Frankly, I don't bother with them. I feel as if I'm sort of beyond the nice day now. I feel as though I've had my share. Why not let someone else have a few? Why should I be hogging all the really nice ones? Of course, people still want me to have one. Everybody wants me to have one. Have a nice day. Say, so, yeah, yeah. Would you give me my change, please, lady? Huh? Some of them were very insistent. I said, have a nice day. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, all right. That's the trouble with have a nice day. It puts all the pressure on you. Now you've got to go out and somehow manage to have a good time. All because of some loose-lipped cashier. <laughs> Have a nice day. Maybe I don't feel like having a nice day. Maybe, just maybe, I've had 52 nice days in a row. And by God, I'm ready for a rotten day. <laughs> Wish me a rotten day now and then. No one ever does that, and they're easy to have, too. Sometimes all you have to do is get up, you know? <laughs> have a rotten day, George. Thank you. Your lovely wife as well, sir. I think it's the word... It's the word nice that bothers me. Nice. It's a soft, it's a flabby word. Doesn't give you a lot of information, does it? Nice. Isn't he nice? Oh, he is so nice. <laughs> He is really nice. And you know, she's nice too. Yes, and he is so nice to her. Isn't that nice? I just don't care for the word. It's like fine, you know. How are you? Fine. <laughs> Nobody is fine. Spaghetti is fine. How's your spaghetti? Fine! That makes a lot more sense to me. 
<laughs> Some guys are great. You ever meet guys who are great? How are you? Great. <laughs> Isn't this great? God, that's great. Look, they're going to kill that guy. Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. That's right. I'm, uh... I've checked myself out. I'm not nice. I'm not fine. I'm not great. People ask me how I am. I say I'm fairly decent. <laughs> Don't give them any superlatives, you know. Nothing to gossip about. I say I'm relatively okay. If I'm in a particularly jaunty mood, I'll tell them, I'm not unwell, thank you. <laughs> that really gets them mad, because they have to figure that one out for themselves. <laughs> Occasionally, I'll look them right in the eye and say, I'm moderately neato. <laughs> then, of course, they have to ask their children how I am. <laughs> so, I think uh, you'll admit that was kind of interesting, huh? And it was... And a hell of a nice morning for me. Excuse me a second here. I have a little personal business. <laughs> Pardon me. I do have a little desk out here tonight, sort of. This is my office, after all, when I'm here. There's my desk, which actually is just a little place for my stuff. When you think about it, that's all. I just wanted to put some things there. You have to have a little place for your stuff, you know? Don't you? That's why they have glove compartments and pockets and drawers on a desk. You gotta have a place for your stuff. That's all you need in life, a place for your stuff. That's all your house is when you think about it. It's just a place for your stuff. I'll tell you this, if you didn't have so much stuff, you wouldn't need a house. A house is just a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. In fact, sometimes you gotta move. No room for your stuff. You gotta get a bigger place, because that's all a house is, is a big pile of stuff. Everybody's got a little pile of stuff. Everybody got a pile of stuff, and you lock your stuff up when you leave. You gotta lock your stuff, huh? Somebody might come along and take some of your stuff. And they always take the good stuff. You know they never bother with all that trash you're saving. <laughs> Do you ever notice when you go to somebody else's house that you don't quite feel at ease? You know why? No room for your stuff. <laughs> somebody else's stuff is all over the place. No wonder you feel dumb there. You go to somebody's house and you're not expecting to stay overnight. You know that situation? Just going over for dinner. Have a little cocoa and gin or something, whatever your style. Just a little something for the evening, but you're not supposed to stay over, but then the bridge is washed out and you do. They give you a little bedroom that they haven't used in years. You know, in fact, someone died in it 11 years ago. And they haven't moved any of his stuff. Or any kind of little bedroom they give you, there's always a little dresser right next to the bed and there's never any room for your stuff. Why? Somebody else's crap is all over the top of the dresser. Have you noticed that their stuff is crap and your crap is stuff? <laughs> get it. You say, get that crap out of my way, let me put my stuff down. Now, sometimes when you go on vacation, you gotta bring some of your stuff with you. you can't bring all of your stuff, you bring just the stuff you know you're gonna need for two weeks, about two weeks worth of stuff. And you go over to the big, the big hotel in Honolulu, you're gonna be there for two weeks, and you open up your stuff and you start putting your stuff out, cause you gotta have some stuff. You don't feel so good cause you're half a world from home, but here's your stuff, so everything must be okay, just putting your stuff there. And you start to feel alright after a day and a half, that's when your friend from Maui calls up. Says, why don't you come over and spend the weekend over here? So, wow. Now what do I pack? Right, you gotta pack an even smaller version of your stuff, the third version of your house. <laughs> Just enough stuff for a weekend on Maui. You get over there and you put up your stuff, a little visine, you put it on the windowsill, whatever you have, you put your stuff up and you start to feel okay. It takes about an hour and a half. You know you're extended now. Supply lines are getting longer and harder to maintain. <laughs> You've got stuff here, stuff there, and stuff way back there. But you finally get your stuff put up and it's okay after about an hour. That's when your friend says, hey, I think tonight we'll go over the other side of the island and spend the night at my friend's house. Wow. <laughs> now what do you bring? Just whatever's in your hand. I figured that out myself. 
I'll close here by just one observation that I made driving over here. Have you noticed that most of the women who are against abortion are women that you wouldn't want to get pregnant in the first place, man? <laughs> Hey, that was good stuff. Good, good stuff. stuff. <laughs> we'll be back with some more stuff in just a minute. <laughs> Lots of stuff. We're back with George Carter. Richard Fryer will be with us in a little while. I love to listen to your material because it, it's, it all comes out of truth. And when you were talking about phrases like, have a nice day, um... Uh, I was thinking as you said that, we use so many of those phrases, like you meet somebody, did you ever walk into a building, you work in a building, like people say work at NBC, and you see the person the first time, mm -hmm. you say good morning or hello or how are you, now you inevitably run into them again in the hall, right. yeah. and you say hello again, uh, or do you not say hello? So are you still okay? Yeah. yeah. Because they start with things, there should be certain phrases that they could retire, like how's it going? Oh yeah. Um, Some of them are really old. Uh, uh, the one I hate when they meet you, people say, uh, how are they treating you? Yeah. As if there's this group of people in your house, you know, <laughs> mistreating you in some way. Or, or, uh, are they keeping you busy? That, that bothers me. Keeping you busy lately? As right. if they have a right to keep me busy. <laughs> no, they're not. I keep them as busy as possible. <laughs> Watching. Maybe they should have retired certain phrases. Yeah. Just say hello, good morning. Yeah, and there, that's it. There's just too many ways to say hello and goodbye. You know what's interesting? To decide to change the way you say goodbye. You know, for, uh, you get into a rut. You get into years at a time where you always say, okay, take it easy. Yeah, hey, take it easy. Then you learn another one and you start to swing and say, hey, straight ahead. Okay, straight ahead now. All right. See you later. Which, you know, you have to decide on which one. Wow. I think you should send out cards to people when you decide to change your goodbye, you know? <laughs> so, you know, just so like you change your address. Saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Should have said anything else. Right. So what have you been working on lately? What's uh? Well, what's, you know, I always have a few uh, show business things. I'm always right. branching out. I'm doing a show that's been getting a lot of publicity here now. Uh, I'm getting my act together and taking it into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's the road show. Yeah, the road show. Right. Then we're going to do, uh, <laughs> then we're doing a <laughs> hat full of brown swagger. Hat full of brown swagger. That's about a guy who's uh, hooked on liver paste, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I've been keeping mostly busy with... Uh, Causes and little, you know, things that interest me. Uh, parakeet menopause is an issue that uh, I think is highly overlooked. Yeah, yeah. highly overlooked. I, I think it's, it's time has come. And, of course, the problem of gay grandparents, especially out here. <laughs> I, I, get, I get a lot of calls from a lot of different groups. Autopsies for the living. This is a new thing, by the way. <laughs> These things are never really addressed and for no, look at. And no. California is the place where something like that ah. could begin, I feel. And the illegal cow fights, I don't know if you're aware of this. The, uh, the illegal cow fights? Yeah. They can place in, again. In huh? the valley here, ah, they yeah. have the illegal cow fights on Thursdays, I think it is. <laughs> We're trying to get together with Doris Day and a few of the people that are interested in animals, you know, right. to get out there and police this thing up. Right. It... <laughs> then, you know, if you watch the talk shows, Johnny, especially the afternoon uh, right. issue kind of talk shows where they have someone on who's written a book about this or that and is working on things, you, you run into a lot of these uh, problems, I guess. You could call them uh, roughly uh, the battering syndrome has come in for a lot of attention in the last year. Of course, battered children, battered wives, and battered husbands, which uh, surprised some people, but is is a problem. Yeah. And I'm we're working now on uh, something unusual: battered casual acquaintances. <laughs> <laughs> Got a hotline yeah. set up? Uh, yeah, and well, for that. One of those hotlines. Unfortunately, we have this hotline where nobody answers. <laughs> That's for people who don't really follow advice anyway. So. That's right. Yeah. But in this battered this battering syndrome, we have something that I found quite unbelievable. Battered plants. Have you heard of this at all? Oh, no. People come it's home and it. take it out on the ivy, you know? <laughs> really? And uh, I don't think it's right. Of course, I think it's not just the slapping, you know, slapping the ivy around. It's the psychological harm that we do them. For instance, do we know for sure that hanging plants aren't scared out of their minds? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no wonder Ivy claims. <laughs> <laughs> and 
you know, the calls just keep coming in. The Beverly Hills Chamber of Poor Taste gave me a call this week from them. They're having a hunger banquet. Uh, <laughs> hors d'oeuvres for Bangladesh, I think they're calling that. <laughs> Good cause. And uh, the dangers of drinking on the toilet. You know, a lot of these things have been mentioned. Uh, I'm getting interested in cosmetic dentistry for the wicked. <laughs> Sounds like something Pat McCormick yes, might be interested in. Yes. Yeah. And St. Anthony's Home for the Recently All Right. Just too many of them. You know. <laughs> the uh, Free Hats for Fat People campaign, which uh, doesn't start till October, but I'm, we're talking it up already. You, know. you got to get a start on these things. So right. I just, you know, I thank you for letting me mention this. You know. Everybody yeah. has plugged this many of them. I never get to mention this many in one show. <laughs> You're working a lot. You're working these three dates, uh, right after. I, after I always go out on the weekend, you know, pick up a little cash. This is my Great Lakes tour. Right. Three days. It's five lakes. I should have extended the tour uh, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, can I mention Big Brother-in-Law, another organization? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like I know the Big Brothers. Uh, Big uh, Brother-in-Law. Uh, 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 this is for men that are married and that don't have a brother-in-law <laughs> but really want one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, I will donate to that. Yeah. yeah. You got to get your priorities in order in this life. That's right. And obviously, you have. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll we'll right. take a break. With Richard Pryor is going to be with us. Come on, Richie. Yeah.